So, so Mel, how did you actually get around for the majority of the trip? Well, most of the way, we travelled by car. Uh, I wanted to do it sort of using vegetable oil or something, but that was completely impossible because um, it was tricky to source and also because of some of the high altitudes we, we had to go up to. Um, and then it, down the Amazon, um, we actually travelled by cargo boat um, with all the locals pretty much. I mean, we bush camp most of the way, but again, that was, that was much, much harder than Africa because so much, of, so much of the country around South America, as I said, was so westernized. So mm. it was mm. actually, so much of it is fenced off yeah. that actually yeah. it gets really hard to find places to sneak into to set up camp. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting, you know, traveling by cargo boat with all the locals down the Amazon, you know, it is, the Amazon not only the might and magnitude of, of that river is extraordinary, mm. um, but, you know, it is their super highway and it is their lifeline. Yep. So if you like, sort of near the, the um, ocean end of the Amazon, I was quite shocked at how many, how many massive cargo boats there were, mm. uh, you know, tankers, because it's so huge. Yeah. Um, so we... And it was important for me to travel with the locals to really get a feel of, you know, everyday life, etc. And, you know, every single stop we made, I think we used about four different boats, actually, in all. Um, but, you know, they'd offload everything from, you know, plastic products. I was shocked at how many plastic products, actually, mostly sugary drinks, copycat, you know, ones of um, Western brands, yep. all the Western brands, um, you know, as well as other products, chicken building materials yeah etc um we slept in hammocks most of the time on boats um on the cargo boats but occasionally i'd hire what was pretty much a metal box of a cabin which with the humidity was hit was tough actually to yeah, keep up yeah. equipment safe and dry yeah um so a few times I did that, and one time actually the captain of the boat very kindly gave me his cabin, which oh, really? <laughs> was really nice. But um, chivalry isn't dead. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it was lovely because after after the locals, you know, we, we talked to all the locals about you know their awareness and all the rest of it, and they really looked out for us. Yeah. Um, and which is important, and um, and actually it was in the cabin in in the captain's cabin that I woke up one night because there's a huge sort of foot long rat oh, wow. in the cabin. And, and actually, I'm <laughs> getting, <laughs> well, I, I got up for a bit to go for a walk. And that's when, it must be until three o'clock in the morning, the crew, some of the crew were walking around and they just picked up all the rubbish bins on the cargo boat and chucked all the rubbish over the side in the middle of the night. Oh, are you joking? <laughs> which blew me away. I mean, yeah. I, it, it was so, you know, it was so clearly done at that time of night, so nobody would really see. Yeah. But it, equally, they, there was no other alternative, if you like, really. Yeah. For yep. them, because the infrastructure, you know, isn't there. Anyway, eventually, mm. I did manage to get back to my cabin, and, and I just thought, well, I, I just can't. The, you know, the rat had eaten through my bag and, and scoffed an apple, and, and I just wrapped myself in whatever I could um, and hoped to didn't eat my toes really anyway. <laughs> <laughs> An Amazonian rat I imagine they uh, must be huge yeah. yes yes yeah. so I think um, you know we had there were many places that as, as I said you know it was very difficult it wasn't until I got to the Amazon that I really felt I was somewhere really remote apart from the Atacama Desert 